Hey everyone, today I'm going to be teaching you how to make this cool realistic looking Jupiter render. And now I want to say that uh, this render was not my original render. And I knew it didn't look right so I asked Reddit and some people on Reddit told me uh, exactly what I did wrong. And so thanks to them for that. Uh, it's actually pretty simple so let's get right into it. So delete your default cube and add a UV sphere. And scale up the sphere to about that big. Something like that. And then uh... Add a subdivision surface modifier by going to your modifiers tab and opening add modifier and subdivision surface. Make the view and render both three. And uh, make sure to right click on it and shade smooth. And now we have this smooth sphere, which is what we want. Next thing we're going to delete this light and then shift A and add a sunlight. And the reason for this is to give it that more planetary look. Like the sun is like reflecting off of it and it has like a dark side. You'll see what I mean here in a minute. So, uh... Once we have it uh, right here in like a position kind of like this, we're going to uh, hit Z and go into rendered view. And you should see that also uh, it's gray. We don't want it to be gray. We're actually not going to use an HDRI for this since I want it to be more realistic. And usually in a uh, realistic picture of a planet, you wouldn't see the stars around it. <laughs> Moon conspiracies. <laughs> uh, anyway, you wouldn't see the uh, stars around it. So uh, that's why we had to change the color over here in this world tab. Just click on the color and change it to dark. And so now you can see that we have this cool... Uh, kind of uh, a cool kind of uh, shadow on it and just adjust it to where it's kind of like this it doesn't have to be like this just kind of what uh, looks cool to you and I will uh, say since it is into the new we are going to be rendering this uh, in cycles at the end of it but uh, EV is just going to be our uh, preview for now so once we have our sphere we're going to add uh, the texture to it so just split our window here uh, in open shader editor and click on our sphere and click new and then once we have our uh, material nodes hit control T and you should get these three nodes if you don't then go up here to edit preferences add-ons and then uh, look up node and then you should see node wrangler check it and click save preferences and then you should have uh, this so just make sure you click on principled and control T and you have these three texture coordinate make sure it's generated and not UV and then flat is going to be a sphere. I had someone ask on the last video why you uh, don't unwrap a sphere uh, in this. And that's only because since it's a sphere um, and we're using a spherical texture that's made to go on a sphere because it's Jupiter and it, it's a planet. Planets are round, I think. Um, unless you're a flat earther, then in that case, then I mean, planets are still round. So, anyway. Um, Planet uh, Jupiter is obviously round, uh, as you can see from any picture on Google. So if we have a spherical texture that is supposed to go around a sphere, then we don't need to unwrap it since it's already pretty much already UV unwrapped for us in a sense, uh, even though it's not. So basically, make sure this uh, image texture is not on flat and it's on sphere, and then make sure this generated is on a vector and make sure it's generated. So just open up uh, your Jupiter texture. I will be uh, providing this in uh, the link in the description if you guys want to download it. Uh, mine is this 8K Jupiter. Now if we go into render view, we should see that we now have Jupiter. And what I want to do is I'm going to rotate Jupiter until we have its little eye right here. And then I'm going to rotate it. I want my camera view to be kind of right here. And so I'm just going to control alt zero. And then I'm going to select my camera and then go down to the camera and just change the uh, focal length to about right there. Turn overlays off to see how it would look. That looks pretty good. Actually, no, it doesn't. We need to make our eye more visible to the eye. I'm just going to do that by rotating this. Okay, so now we have uh, the eye. Since I mean, who would make a Jupiter render without having the eye of Jupiter in the render? Like, you don't, you don't do that. So there we go, we have uh, the angle. And now what I'm going to do is, is for this next part, I'm going to switch to cycles. And uh, then under performance, I'm going to change the start pixels to 200, just so we don't have a noisier kind of uh, thing. Okay, so you'll see that um, it's not as bright anymore. So just uh, select your light and go down here to your light and use nodes and just change it to like 3. Yeah, something like 3. Something like that. Uh, something that makes your uh, planet bright. Just 
just adjusting the lighting a little bit. Alright, now uh, we have this, and here's what uh, the next part is. is So if we looked at this now, you could theoretically just render this now and have it uh, a Jupiter render, but planets have atmospheres, and even though Jupiter doesn't have a very big and distinct atmosphere, like something like Earth's where you can clearly see there's like blue around it, Jupiter does have an overlay in an atmosphere, so I'm going to teach you how to create that. So what we're going to want to do is we're just going to go into wireframe mode, select the sphere, shift D, and then scale it up just a little bit to where it's barely over uh, our thingy. And if we delete these three nodes, no, oops, no, don't, don't do that. Uh, I'm, I'm stupid. If we give it another material, um, and we go into render mode, we should see that, yes, it does have... Uh, this new material if we hide this we should see Jupiter underneath it okay so now that we have that uh, what we're gonna want to do is we're going to want to uh, we're gonna keep the principled but we're also going to add a transparent a BSDF and then we're going to add a mix shader and just plug that in in this line if you automatically drag it it'll automatically plug in and then plug the transparent under it and then we're going to add a layer weight and then uh this layer weight turn the facing into the fact and now if I did this right I think we have to swap these yeah okay so now we have this uh, kind of foggy haze over Jupiter and make sure transparent is on top uh, principled is on the bottom or diffuse whichever one you want to use I just use principled because it's default if you're using an older version of blender it'll be diffuse but same same uh, concept now we see that um, our Jupiter has this haze around it but it's way too much so the way we'd fix that is just turn the blend down to maybe 0 0.2 point 0.2, two point one uh, I'd say point two and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to take I'm gonna turn overlays back on select the sphere go back in a wireframe and just shrink it down a little bit to where it's like right on it now we go into rendered, you should see that yes, indeed, it does have the uh, haze around it. So um, now just to show you guys the difference, this is it with the haze and this is it without the haze. It kind of gives it that more, not just as like flat vibe on it, and it, it, it looks cool. And next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go over to, I think it's in this tab, yeah, this uh, render tab and go into color management and on look turn it up to very high contrast and what that does is it basically adds contrast into the scene and it makes the um, entire render look a whole lot better so that's basically it um, one of my, my settings that I recommend is uh, 1920 by 1080 that's 1080 p or if you want like an Instagram you can just look up the ratios for that um, device GPU compute if your GPU is better than your CPU sampling I'm gonna do 300 samples um, you don't need to bother with the light paths uh, performance if you're on GPU uh, turn it to 256 if you're on CPU keep it at 64 uh, I, I render my GPU so I'm gonna use 256 and then over here in uh, this uh, render layers tab make sure to check denoising so you don't have any like noise in your scene and now we should be able to render this out and have it like this now I'll be back to you guys and I'm going to do a little tiny bit of post processing or compositing but not a ton. So I'll be back to you guys once this is rendered. Alright guys so uh, this is our render and um, it looks pretty cool right now but I'm just going to add a little bit of stuff and I'm just going to go to our compositing tab and then here's the compositing tab. I know it's scary right? Um, you've probably uh, used this before if you haven't and you're a beginner but uh, th and that's fine. That's fine. That's what that's what I made these tutorials for. So here's how to use the compositing tab. So first we're gonna click Use Nodes and then we're gonna click Auto Render. Now if you have that handy dandy Node Wrangler add-on that we used in the beginning, if you shift or Control Shift and click on this Render Layers and any other node, uh, you'll get this handy dandy Viewer Node, and that's basically what gives us this backdrop right here. That's what backdrop is. If we take this off, then we don't have it, but it's handy to have it. 
Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to add a RGB curves mode. And what we can do here is if we control shift we'll click on this, we can see that we can bring up and down some of the kind of midtones and make it a little bit darker and nicer. So just adjust this, it's not much, but it gives it that subtle little difference. Like if we do it here, you see it's really light, but if we do it like here, it's darker. And I kinda like how uh, it being darker. Uh, not that dark, I'm gonna give it a little bit more. Yeah, kinda like there. It's not much, but it gives it a little bit more um, emphasis. Now, usually with a lot of my renders, I use this thing called lens distortion. And what that basically does is it gives us this chromatic aberration effect. And I do that for a lot of my renders. Now, the reason I don't want to do it here, and I don't want to do a ton of post-processing, is this is a realistic render of Jupiter. Now, if you see a realistic render of Jupiter, or a realistic, like if you somehow went to space and looked at Jupiter right now, you wouldn't see a ton of chromatic aberration and lens distortion and like all that stuff. It's 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 just Jupiter, you know. Like that's what this tutorial is. But obviously, if you want to make it stylized, Blender Guru has an insane tutorial on how to make a stylized Earth, and uh, that's actually one of my uh, beginner uh, tutorials that I followed, and it um, and I did some stuff on that, and it was really cool, and it helped me a lot. Um, this along with some of my other space renders are on my art station and I'd recommend you check it out it's right here you see I have two followers <laughs> I'm nice but uh, I have I post most of my artwork on here and right now I'm working on my space set and uh, this is my original Jupiter render right here um, and then right here we have this like moon re moon render and you can see the chromatic aberration like right here and like up here and stuff and like there uh, and then this is uh, a render that I took from Blender Guru's uh, tutorial, and I added some of my own stuff on it, edited some stuff, but for the most part, it's his. Then we have a moon render. If you guys want to see this moon render, it's a little bit different from Jupiter since it has this bump and stuff on it. I, do, I also make a tutorial on how to uh, make a bump map. If you guys want to see that, make sure to leave it in the comments below. I also have this Black Ops 2 uh, render, uh, main menu render that I made a while back. And then I also have this, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, right here, it's low poly and stuff. Uh, these were some of my old renders. But, uh, yeah, uh, if you guys want to uh, take these, uh, you can, you're can. you welcome to use any of these uh, artworks that I uh, upload on here. You're welcome to use any of them uh, at all for your backgrounds, uh, anything. They're free to use. You don't have to get credit. Uh, but just make sure you don't take them as your own. So that's fine. Uh, I'll leave this in the description below. Um, so thanks guys for watching. Uh, this is our final render right here. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. Um, if you guys want to see anything more, um, then make sure to leave it in the comments below. Uh, make sure to like the video. It really helps me out. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.